<laughs> cool. Alright, um, good evening, everybody. All yeah, right. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> oh, yeah, if you had ever seen the Truman Show, Jess just showed that to me. I kind of realized, when I was a kid, I kind of thought, like... That same concept. Yeah, it's probably pretty common. That's probably why they made a movie. All right, everyone, I'm, make, I'm making a little post here on what we're going to be covering. It's in the comments. Get your popcorn ready, because uh, later tonight... Hey, Britton, hope you're doing great, man. I see you're watching here. Um, yeah, so this will be uh, the preliminary. We're going to actually debate each other first before the presidential debate tonight. I was unaware. <laughs> yeah, perfect. That's, that's how I win the debate. I actually just blindside Jess. <laughs> uh, hey, Alon. Good to see you, man. All right. Um, I am going to now... Well, we have this here. All right. So here's a little background on this. Like I said, get your popcorn ready. This is going to be good. If you're in a relationship with a significant other or just in general, you have a relationship with yourself, you have a relationship with friends, family, all that. Okay, this, instead of fighting, because we all know that fighting happens, here is an alternative of what you can do, okay? Yeah. So I, I posted a comment at the top. As more people hop on and comments come in, You'll just have to scroll up, but this is what Jess and I go through every two weeks. And you want to say anything about it before we jump in? Well, we've uh, gone live and talked about what it is that we set up as an agreement with each other. Um, but we've never sat down and gone through all the principles with you guys, as well as like this is kind of like our weekly meeting or bi-weekly bi meeting yeah, so live so as we come to our realizations you guys will be able to experience that with us so we'll just have like an ongoing conversation as we just read through these um, principles that we've agreed to um, and that means within our relationship this is something that we live by this is something that we refer back to we can call each other out on we can well in other words hold e hold each other accountable um, not in a spiteful way, but in just like a, hey, like this is what we've agreed to it. Um, so yeah, that's just like a little precursor to exactly what's going down. And yeah, I think we can just hop in, huh? Let's do it, yeah. And it'll make sense as we go on. And so we're going to cover quite a bit here. And Definitely. I promise every single one of these has its purpose for mm -hmm. it. If we could make it any shorter, we would, but it's not. And this is Oh, what it's only is. gonna get longer. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, most likely. So mm -hmm. it's this is this is our, our foundation to our relationship. Mm -hmm. And so you're about to see that and we would suggest that you look at this for yourself, take some notes, and then apply it in your own life. All right, All right. so I'll cook us off. All right. All right, so this is the first principle and we like to read it and assess it for what it is, and then we'll say yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all right, the principle of what is best for all, guiding myself in thought, word, and deed, to always and always direct all things to the best possible outcome for all, mm. taking into consideration the effects of my thoughts, words, and deeds on the world around me, people, plants, animals, and environment, ensuring that the thoughts, words, and deeds I'm living honor the best potential of myself and all of life on earth to the best of my ability. Standing unconditionally in the shoes of all people and all things, and being able to, at the end of the day, say that I have fully considered all within the context of creating the best possible outcome for everyone and everything, that I've honored and considered them in the way I would like to be honored and considered. Mm. Can wow. you look up the definition of potential? Mm -hmm. And then unconditionally so the definition of potential is having or showing the capacity to become or develop into something in the future mm. so showing the capacity to develop okay kind of like a seed right it, ha it yeah. has a potential within it oh it's also a noun the latent qualities or abilities that may do be developed and lead to future success or usefulness or in physics the quantity determine the energy of mass in a gravitational field or of charge in an electric field. Mm. Cool. Does that answer what you're looking for? Yeah, I just wanted to see, because as I'm living 
honor the best potential of myself in all life. So I just wanted to see like what that would really look like. Yeah. To like honor the potential. So the potential, look up honor actually, mm -hmm. that would be good. We like to really understand words. <laughs> There's a big reason behind that because words are important. Honor is high respect and great esteem or adherence to what is right or to a conventional standard of conduct. Otherwise, it's a verb, regard with great respect or fulfill an obligation or keep an agreement. Ah, that's cool. So, honor the potential. So that's like respecting not only somebody's potential, but then helping them fulfill their potential. Yeah. And that's not only theirs, but your own as well. Mm -hmm. And that's really cool because like you see people potentially like say they're speaking on stage or they're doing this athletic activity or they're supporting someone in this way and you see potential there, but they maybe aren't very skilled in it yet or they mess up here or there. And instead of judging them, you respect them for that potential and you, if there's anything you can help support them in, you help support them. And the same with yourself. Like if you see a, you see potential in yourself, instead of judging yourself, it's respecting yourself enough to support yourself. And that's, that's really cool. I guess I never really looked up the definitions of those words before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is probably the most loaded one. Yeah. And it really to good. really like, so that's how it fits into step two is self honesty. Cause it's like, wow, taking just that little part, taking into consideration mm -hmm. the effects of my thoughts, words, and deeds on the world around me. Mm -hmm. Like there's so much in that. If we're really honest, yeah. like how much of our day do we go around thinking just unnecessary thoughts? Yeah. yeah. So it, it's about wow. living within self honesty. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I agree to that. And, yeah. and there's just one other part I want to touch on. Mm -hmm. It's, um, to the best to the best of my ability. There it is, yeah. So I'm uh, honor the best potential of myself and all of life on earth to the best of my ability, which is cool. Cause it's not like you have to be perfect, like totally flawless. It's just to be able to self honestly say like, I actually did my best. Yeah. And then, you know, you can go to bed like at peace knowing I'm actually, you know, doing Oh yeah, and could you define unconditionally as well? Mm -hmm. Unconditional? Oops. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, in there it's unconditional but unconditional. unconditional right we always hear that word unconditional love right. unconditional whatever. what does it really mean not subject to any conditions okay so. uh, <laughs> there's it's got to be better than that unconditional yeah so i mean it's like it's without condition so let's look up condition Condition is the state of something with regard to its appearance, quality, or working order, or the circumstances affecting the way in which people live or work, or have a significant influence on or determine the manner or outcome of something. Okay, so it's like the circumstances. So, so it would really be no matter what the circumstances are, mm. to do it anyway, standing unconditionally. In the shoes of all people and all things, and being able to at the end of the day say that I have fully considered all within the context of creating the best possible outcome for everyone and everything. That's so cool because even if it's somebody who's a criminal, mm -hmm. even if it's a child suffering, even if it's, you know, all these different things, like it's unconditionally standing in the shoes of all of those people, all those plants, all those animals, like all the trees that are being burnt down right now, all the dolphins that are still being poached outside of Japan, like yeah. all that stuff. Like I unconditionally stand in the shoes of each of those living beings. And it's like, have you fully considered each of them? And that's, that's, that's profound. That's a lot. It, it's a massive undertaking. And this is why <laughs> it's so important to, to work on your ability to process information. Mm because it can just be overwhelming to look at like how screwed up the world is yeah, and to actually still move yourself forward. But that's what we're doing. I mean, you're seeing us living it. So, yeah, yeah. so I agree to that. I agree to that as well. All right. You got this. The principle of self honesty, reflecting on myself and seeing every part of me, the good, bad, and ugly 
without bias or judgment so that I can take responsibility to change that which I no longer accept and allow. Yes, <laughs> I agree to that. Yeah, done. Wow. Um, look up bias for me. Mm -hmm. We're going to define bias here. For those who just joined the live stream, it's in the comments what we're referring to. Um, okay, bias. Prejudice in favor of or against one thing, person, or group compared with another, usually in a way mm -hmm. considered to be unfair. Or a verb. Cause to feel or show inclination or prejudice for or against someone or something else. So it's basically like being un unfair, leaning toward one thing. Mm -hmm. at, almost at the expense of another. Yeah, that's cool because when you're reflecting on yourself and seeing every part of yourself, the good and bad, the ugly, I see a bias as um, you having an image in your head of like what you should be or how you should be or where your capabilities should be at. So it's like if I have this body image that I have in my head of what I think I think my body should look like well <laughs> that is that is not reflecting on yourself with self-honesty because you're not actually you're not actually looking at your body for what it is and seeing it at its full potential you're just projecting a false image in your head that you'll never be able to adhere to because it's just imagination and so that that bias point I see it as just like essentially imagination of a false expectation of yourself um so that's really cool yeah and i see how that now fits into the next one mm -hmm. as well because i agree to this so yeah I, I agree to this yeah. for sure because now that fits in so well to self-perfection so th so the next principle the, the principle of self-perfection through self-creation self-perfection is the process of reflecting on and investigating myself through writing releasing myself from the past through self-forgiveness and changing myself through self-application mm -hmm. and living change. These tools allow me to develop a deep intimacy with myself, enabling me to see the workings of who I am, how I came to be this way, and how to create myself into the best possible expression of myself mm -hmm. that I can be. And I see how that fits so well into self-honesty because when we're honest with ourselves, like our minds are crazy. <laughs> we'll have... <laughs> We'll have images in our mind yeah. of like, this is who I need to be. This is yeah. how I need to talk and walk and dress and all that stuff. Yeah. But when you really understand where your thoughts come from, mm -hmm. it comes from, basically it didn't come from you. It came from your environment. You can yeah. look into feral children if you want to understand that. It's like, we didn't actually intentionally design ourselves. Our parents and our environment and media did that to us. Yeah. So now when we have this, I mean, I don't know the stats on this, but like how many like young girls especially have body image issues. I'm, the majority. I'd say, yeah, from my experience with the women I've that I've never met someone who hasn't. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so, so, so we can look at that for what it is. And then within the context of, well, what's best for all would be not body image issues. Yeah. And then, but self-honesty, we have to acknowledge, okay, there are issues that people have with looking at the body. Mm -hmm. So then what do we do with that? this self-perfection through self-creation so yeah doing self-forgiveness mm -hmm. every day yeah. i mean jess and i we have our writing pro pro um, process mm -hmm. yeah in our practice and then living the change every day so that at a certain point you can get to that point where like you know you can actually see see self honestly that you're good mm -hmm. like you're good enough and we got to still keep walking the process because yeah. it's not enough for you to just be good. Mm -hmm. Like, then we got to start taking responsibility and supporting others through that. Yeah, definitely. I agree to that. Yeah, I agree to that. The principle of investigate all things and keep what is good. I unconditionally investigate, consider, and introspect all aspects, expressions, perspectives, and avenues of life and assess what can practically be applied within the principle of what is best for all. Yeah, that, that one's loaded as well. All those different words. What, what was the 
the avenues of life. What was the definition of avenues again? Oh yeah, so we were just looking this up. Define avenue. So we all think avenue is like you know a street, right? So that is one definition. We're just like of a avenue. way of life. Yeah. So there's another way though. Mm -hmm. Avenue, a way of approaching a problem or making progress toward something. Mm, say that again. A way of approaching a problem or making progress toward something. And that's an avenue. And so if you put that into this avenues of life and assessing what can practically be applied within the principle of what is best for all. So looking at what other people do when approaching problems and what they implement in making progress towards something and figuring out what is the best way to implement that. That's so cool. I never even really thought about that because, yeah, like we said, it just seemed like a way of life. I guess that's kind of that, but just in that specific definition. Um, and then aspects, expressions, perspectives, and avenues. Yeah, I mean, each of these words mean something. and um... Yeah, and, and it also says to not only investigate and consider, but introspect. So that would be looking at your aspects, expressions, perspectives, and avenues, as well as others. Yeah, so like, how do you approach mm -hmm. your life and the problems in your life? Yeah. And how do you make progress in that? Because we each have our own way mm -hmm. to an extent, yet there's certain principles that we can all adopt and then apply them within our own lives. Um. Yeah, Britain. Um, so is this a collection of principles that you created? We didn't create these. This, this is a set of principles from a group called Destiny. And then we have just taken them on for ourselves. Yeah, and um, then at the yeah. end, uh, after the Destiny principles, though, there are more principles that we've decided to incorporate in our relationship on top of these. We just see these as so relevant. Um, it's just like straight common sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then even so looking at this principle of investigate all things and keep what is good, I like to apply that even with like looking at principles, for mm -hmm. example, like destiny. Right. And I, I look at it and there's like a ton of information in the website mm -hmm. and you know YouTube videos and all that. And I just see it as let me just look at this for myself, see mm -hmm. what makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Take that on. If any of it doesn't make sense. Okay, cool. Just you know, disregard. Yeah, but you're so right. Um, after you dissect each word, I mean, this is what our sixth, seventh meeting, bi-weekly meeting, where we've read through these principles. Oh, I think we've had more than that, but yeah. Probably like 10 or something. Yeah. Like, so this is like, we've done this, this is like maybe 10th, the 10th time that we've read through each of these. And every time we read through these principles, we come to even more... Uh, like conclusions on them and we see them in new ways and we look up the words and even looking up a word now as opposed to 10 meetings or five meetings ago like you can see it differently because it's in a new frame of time so we see the value of reading through these not only to hold each other accountable but also to gain more understanding of the principles themselves and how they can be applied mm -hmm. in our lives yeah so. and like every single time we mm. check in it's like our lives keep getting more expansive and yeah. awesome that's great so yeah so i agree to that cool yeah i agree to that too okay principle of self-responsibility living and applying my ability to respond within the realization that i alone am responsible for what i accept and allow inside myself my relationships and my outside world only i have the power and ability to change that which is compromising who i am what i live and how this affects others look up change to find change? Yeah. Yeah, how often do we hear that word? <laughs> really, like if someone were to ask you, what's the definition of change? Have something... Coins in my pocket? <laughs> <laughs> Have something, um, like, yeah, changes. <laughs> okay, uh, change. Verb, make or become different. Take or use another instead of. Mm. Yeah, like change your name. Yeah. Okay, or noun. The act or instance of making or becoming different. Or coins. The act. Is, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So it's it, like a process it's, of it's becoming like different. Becoming different, yeah. So change isn't necessarily like right now, right here, black and white, left and right. This is I changed directions. I changed my thoughts. I changed the principles that I live. I changed by. my life. I changed my life. It's <laughs> like it can be 
a process. It can be an act of you changing your life, like ongoing. Like we're actively changing our lives, but we're not, it's not like we're where we want to go. It's not like we've completed that change. So that's, that's really cool. I like that. Yeah. And, and then just, I mean, the word responsibility itself is so mm. big because <laughs> like, I mean, as a kid, I remember it was like responsibility meant like your chores. Mm. I was like, yeah. oh, I don't want responsibility. Right. But now I, now I realize that my ability to respond and, mm. and take ownership of things and, and direct things, mm -hmm. that is such a gift. So yeah. yeah. What about living? Like living and applying my ability to respond. It's like living my you ability. Want the, you want the definition of living? Yeah, sure. But like living my ability to respond. It's like. Yeah. So it, that's like all day, every day, with it, every it's, breath. Yeah, it's like in every single moment. It's like that it becomes who you are. Yeah. That's such a profound thing. That it took me years. I used to have people around me tell that, and it took me well, a long time to come. It's like, that. well, in your thoughts, words, and deeds, are you living the ability to respond? Or do your thoughts react automatically? Or do you react with words? Or do you react in deeds? Like, just like that's how I see that it's like relevant in every area. It's like being able to take complete responsibility of all of that. So that you can just live in a way that you just respond to life instead of react to life. Mm -hmm. Because we live in such a reactionary world. Like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's all emotion. And it's wild. Um, yeah, so th I see the, the weight of that. Absolutely. Living and applying my ability to respond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and just want to just highlight that. Only I have the power and ability to change that which is compromising who I am, what I live, and how this affects others. It's on you. It's on me. No one can change for you. Yeah. It's you. It's a decision that you make. Cool. I agree to that. Yeah, I agree to that as well. Cool. All right. The principle of self-awareness. An active reflection of seeing of what is happening inside myself. My thoughts, emotions, feelings, reactions, and understanding that I am at all times responsible for what I accept and allow and what I participate in and thus give my power to and attention to. To realize that my words become deeds and thus the words I allow within become the actions and consequences I create without. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so like we always hear about self-awareness, yeah. right? Like you got to be aware of yourself. Okay, cool. So this is now more words to expand that and really mm -hmm. open up what does that look like. And I love how it's an active reflection, not passive reflection. Yeah, <laughs> it went even further than what I did it. It, it, it pretty much said the same thing I brought up last principle was thoughts, emotions, feelings, reactions, and understanding that I am at all times responsible mm -hmm. for what I accept. So that's like, not only is it your thoughts, your words, and your deeds, it's also your feelings and reactions. And so many people think that your feelings and reactions are out of your control. And that you're at uh, effect of your feelings and reactions. But this is showing you that you're actually a cause mm -hmm. of your feelings and reactions. Well, and, and, and for anyone who just joined it, this is in the comments where, where we're going through these principles. And it's, so after it says that I'm responsible for what I accept and allow mm -hmm. and what I participate in, and thus give my power and attention too. Wow. So like we, we all like to think about like power, wow. like how do I have more power? 48 laws of power, all these books about power, being a powerful person. Well, realize that what you're giving mm -hmm. your attention to, what you're accepting, mm -hmm. what you're allowing, that is what you're giving your power to. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. <laughs> the issue that I see is that we're so <laughs> distracted and we're so yeah. not self-aware that we just give away our power to like everything outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. But you can actually reclaim that power through taking full self-responsibility and then living these principles like self-awareness because it's going to take time to rebuild that. But, I mean, would you rather be powerful than not powerful? You answer that for yourself. Well, that's, yeah, that's, 
That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then that one other part to realize, this is the last part of it, is to realize that my words become deeds and thus the words I allow within become the actions and consequences I create without. That is like so deep. I don't know if y'all have heard about this concept of living words or like becoming the living Mm -hmm. word. I think that's even a principle from the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yet understanding at any given time, you're living different words. You may be living the word procrastination. Yeah. Or boredom. Or anger. Sad. Sad. Depressed. Uncertain. Lazy, fearful. Or, and, and But then at other times, you could think of, well, when were times that I was living the word confidence or excitement or happiness? So it's like these words yeah. are within us. And what we accept and allow within us ends up being what we create in the outside world. Yeah. So, so you, can, you can choose the words in which you live by. And... That's a process, like we, we've we undertaken that process of being able to like actually rewrite the words inside of you, but to just alone be aware of the words you're living in each moment is <laughs> profound. So mm-hmm. if you're, you're sitting, not doing anything, like what words are you living? You know, if you have things that you could be doing, mm-hmm. are you procrastinating? Maybe distracted. Are you being distracted, lazy? Are you unmotivated? Whatever it is. But then as you accomplish those tasks, what words are you living? Mm -hmm. And that's the benefit. I mean, there's so much research that goes into having high vocabulary, meaning having a lot of words. Mm -hmm. Because it allows you to be ready for any situation Mm -hmm. in your life. I mean, that's why we do TechnoTutor. That's why we're so committed to it. Which, if you don't know what what TechnoTutor is, it's a tool that allows you to rapidly build your vocabulary. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so much more than that, but... It allows you to actually yeah. change what's going on on the inside through the words and then how you can you know, use them to create your life. Hey, Kelsey. So, so I agree to that, Jess. I agree to self-awareness. <laughs> yes, I agree to that as well. All right. What's up, Nick, as well? I saw that you're on here. All right, so here's the next one. The principle of give as you would like to receive. It's a deep one. Yes. Considering the context and the lives of each individual being. Considering, regarding, and supporting them in the way that I would have liked to be considered, regarded, and supported had I been in their place and lived Mm -hmm. their life. Where the support that I give does not compromise myself or cause harm to anyone. Mm. That's a deep one. I see. I keep getting challenged on this. What's the difference between considered and regarded? Well, we'll see. Define. (laughs) Consider. Wow. Define, consider, think carefully about something typically before making a decision. Okay, so consider is more thinking, and I think regard is more of a feeling. Uh, regard is consider or think of in a specified way, or attention or concern for something. Yeah. Okay, so they're pretty close. Yeah. Okay, well, attention is different than just thinking. So being able to keep that attention to be able to support. Yeah, that's so cool. Because if you think about it, have you ever considered how you want to be considered? (laughs) Have you ever thought about how you want to be regarded? How you want to be supported? Have you ever sat down with yourself and wrote out those things? How do I want to be considered? How do I want to be supported? How do I want to be regarded? I've never, I mean, I have now, I think you, but previously. You brought that up a few days ago, and yeah. I was like, that was so fast, I, I never thought about that. Previously, I've, I've done that, but before that, I had never even thought about that before. Like, I, how do I want to be considered? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's and profound. I think, so I think we talked about that the other day, and for both of us, we had one point, is like, mm-hmm. we for sure want people to be present with us. Yeah. And to like, really be here. Mm-hmm. Not in their mind, not thinking they already know what we're going to say, just like being here, being yeah. present. Hmm. And so then if that's how you want to receive, then yeah. practice giving that. And yeah. it's going to be a process, but you'd be amazed what you can do when you really focus on it. Mm-hmm. Cool. I mean, I agree to that. And it's cool how it says, considering in the context and the lives of each individual being. So it's like, not just how you would want to be considered, but like, look at their life and what's happening with them and like give yourself context on how you would consider somebody else 
Um, because if you just simply say, oh, I want to be considered this way, so everybody wants to be considered this way, you're not actually supporting them potentially. Like, you have to look at the context. And to be able to support someone, it could be completely unique from how you support yourself. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I agree to that. Cool. Okay. The Thank principle you. of self-trust. No well, matter another good one. <laughs> no matter what hardships, failures, and mistakes I may face, I always come back to myself and the principles that I stand as. I will not give up or allow myself to blame others for the circumstances of my life or how I choose to live it. I take absolute self-responsibility. Bam. I agree to that. <laughs> I agree to that as well. Yeah. And just looking at what does that actually look like yeah. in in our day-to-day life like the little failures the little hardships the little mm-hmm. things that come up that's like oh this kind of sucks it's like okay keep going <laughs> yeah and it's also like say you say something and you realize that wasn't best to say that like wasn't the right person to say that to or i didn't speak from where I was trying to come from. (laughs) Like I didn't speak with the clarity I needed or whatever it is, like just like your words, like I can't, I can remember many times in my life. I'm like, why did you say that? You shouldn't have said that. You should have said this like over and over, just continually like not speaking clearly. But in those instances, it's like, after that happens, Are you coming back to your principles? Are you coming back to what you stand as? And, or are you giving up on yourself? Like, oh, I can't, I just, I just keep saying the wrong thing. And so I should just stop. I should just stop talking. I should just stop posting on Facebook. I should just stop, you know, interacting with this individual or whatever, because you're just giving up. Well, if you truly are standing by your principles and coming back to them, even if you say something that you didn't mean to say, then you will get better. And you'll be coming from that as your starting point. And so that will come through in what you say. It may take time because you've lived an entire life potentially before without principles. (laughs) So implementing them may take time, but it's 100% worth it. And that is truly how you live in self-trust it's like i trust myself to say the right things because i'm starting my starting point is clear and that's how you develop it over time you can't just give up or else you'll never have self-trust mm-hmm. it's good yeah i cool. agree to that yeah i agree all right oh this one's great all right nine the principle of making love real nurturing and honoring the utmost potential in every individual including myself wherein love is not a feeling or emotions, but an action that is lived by doing whatever is necessary to support without compromising myself or the other, without fear of losing the relationship or the feelings associated to love, and without accepting or allowing less than my own or my partner's utmost potential. Mm. I think we're getting pretty good at this by now, this one. It's, it's like, here's a, here's a cool like redefinition of love. Love equals give. Or love equals action. And you can still feel the positive, warm, fuzzy feelings. And that's cool. But that's not what love really is. Like the warm, fuzzy feeling isn't going to put food in your child's stomach. Mm -hmm. Yet, you'll get a pretty fuzzy feeling if you're the one who's providing for them. You know? So that's like what we mean by making love real. It's cool because it says... By doing whatever is necessary to support without compromising myself or the other. So it's like within giving love to the world, it's like, okay, if you're not compromising yourself, you should be showing love to the world through giving. Do you understand how much there is that needs to be done in this world? How many kids die every day? I just looked up the stats and almost seven million people this year have died from hunger from hunger for goodness sakes every day 20,000 children die of preventable causes like 
are you truly doing whatever is necessary to support? If you feel like you're not, reach out. Like, yeah, we have Join different groups group. we can plug you into. And it's not like you Seriously. have to do some big commitment or anything. Just be part of like-minded people who are actually making love real. Yeah. Because no amount of meditation or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, people think, oh, if we just all vibrate love, it's going to, like, heal the world. It's like, no. <laughs> that's You're actually distracting people. Yeah. Real ways to change the world is through a system. That sure. distributes goods mm-hmm. and necessities. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's a really good one. I agree to that. Yeah, absolutely. So it's not only within your partnership, but the world. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That's good. Cool. All right, number 10. What Honor- happened to <laughs> Honoring life. Honoring life in all forms. I expand my awareness and responsibility to consider and create the best possible life for everyone and everything from the large to the small. Wow. (laughs) This is a big one for me. I used to not be a big fan of animals. I didn't like hate animals, but I was just like, eh, it's just animals. But now I realize, like, wait, those are living beings. Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are like me. They're like, it's just an animal. But it's actually like a life form. And so honor it. Yeah. It's cool that it says not only do you expand your awareness, but it's your responsibility mm-hmm. to consider and create the best possible life for everyone and everything from the large to the small. Mm-hmm. So it's like all the things we've been talking about. It's all the trees that have been burnt down or cut down. It's all the dolphins being killed, all the whales being killed, all the know, the, man, the elephants and the tusks and just... Yeah, it's so ridiculous. Literally all this. And the rhinos and the horns and the the tigers. I mean, all of this, it's wild. We we don't even consider the life. And it's like we're literally compounding the consequence of that by giving tacit approval. What I mean by tacit approval is that you may not be saying, yes, this is great. Go kill all the whales. Like, this is exactly what we should be doing with our life. We should definitely be cutting down these trees, killing these dolphins. You gotta take those husks and the horns. Like, this is this is how life should be. Okay, that, not that kind of approval. Okay, tacit approval literally means you're standing by and watching and not saying anything. Mm-hmm. Like, imagine if you were walking past some, like, kid getting abused. And you don't do anything. That's tacit approval. Well, even tacit approval can be considered as a a head nod. Or a Mm -hmm. yeah. So, like, maybe you're posting on Facebook. We're burning the trees down. This, this. Okay, well, is posting on Facebook solving it? No. Is sharing a video solving it? No. You have to actually be part of groups of people that understand the root causes of these things and then are working toward solutions, which will take years. Yet. (laughs) Who are you? Are you the kind of person that's just going to go, oh, oh, whatever? Or like, are you actually going to stand? Mm -hmm. That's the real test of who you are. Yeah, I agree to that. Yeah, I agree to that too. All right, 11. The principle of relationships is agreements. Individuals coming together to support the manifestation of the best possible versions of ourselves and each other. Nurturing each other's potential and supporting one another to transform weaknesses into strengths. Creating a safe space for the healthy expression of intimacy and sexuality. Mm. I agree to that. Versions. Look up versions. Define versions. Okay. Define versions. Version, a particular form of something differing in certain respects from an earlier form or other forms of the same type of the thing. Or an account of a matter from a particular person's point of view. I like this is my version of the story. Create a new version of... Yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like this... Best possible version of ourselves. Yeah. You have to be willing to change in order to adjust into your best version of yourself. Or adapt into your best version of yourself. It's teachability, you know? Yeah. Because 
if you're not willing to change or let go of certain things or whatever, like you're not going to become the best version of yourself. Like, especially if you're abiding by the programs that you're running by since childhood. I'm going to tell you programs right meaning now, like how you think. Yes, I'm going to tell you right now, like <laughs> you were imprinted with a lot of things as a child. Imprinting means you're as a child. Okay, for example, say you take an eight month old and you put him in China for 20 years. They'll probably know Chinese. You take an adult and you put them in China for 20 years. They may not even learn a lick. Okay? Like, when you're young, you're malleable. Your brain is still absorbing a lot of new information. It's creating new neural pathways. And when you're one through seven years old, the environment you're in, you have solidified pathways that are from the environment you were in. And you have to be willing to investigate that and see if they're actually supporting your best version of yourself. If not, you have to work through them. And that's a... That, is a difficult process without the tools that are necessary to work through them, um, if not impossible. <laughs> uh, and we have some tools that can support you with that, if that's something that you could even understand me talking about. <laughs> um, yes, I agree to that. Yeah, absolutely. The <clears throat> principle of visibly living the principles. Actively living the proof of what can be accomplished when individuals live their potential by ensuring that these principles are in all that we do in all areas of my life so that the example I set for others always stands for what is best for all. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's this. It's like literally us visibly living the principles. Like it's enough. Yeah. It, it's not enough for us to just have these one-on-one -on -one conversations. Like, yes, there's a time and place for it. Right. And that's also why we make these videos. And Nick, that's awesome. That's a big one for you. I'm, you may have been referring to the last one or this one. Let me know which I one. I think this one. I think yeah. the principle of visit, visibly living the principles. Yeah, because... So there's another really awesome quote. It's, I commit myself to show that inner change without immediate outer change is a lie. Yeah. So that means if I think I'm changing on the inside... But my life is not different. I'm actually lying to myself. Mm -hmm. So this is about visibly living the principles. And how do you know you've really changed? What are other people saying to you? Right? Do you, do you have verifiable, measurable, yeah. practical change in your life? That's how you know you're changing. Mm -hmm. so. And it's cool that it talks about... Nice. Okay, cool. That's some self-honesty there. Isn't yes. <laughs> um, so it's also cool how it talks about visibly living these principles in all you do, in all areas of your life. Because it's one thing to apply it in your social media engagement, in your interactions with people, or in your public eye appearance or whatever. But to apply it in every aspect of your life, that's like your thoughts, your emotions, your reactions, your deeds, your words, your relationships. I mean, like, that's a lot. Yeah, but it's absolutely possible. I mean, that, that's why we call it the seven-year journey to life. Like, that's within this whole group called Destiny. They constantly refer to this mm -hmm. seven-year journey because it mm -hmm. took you seven years as a child to take on all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And unless you're born in the super elite and you were taught from day one how to have high self-esteem and how to read out of the dictionary and things like that. Process information, think you, critically. Then you, you, there's a lot you're missing. Yeah. There's a lot we're all missing. Mm -hmm. But also if you were raised in the elite like that, you probably wouldn't be watching this video and you probably wouldn't care about the average person. Right. So that's why we're out here sharing this mm -hmm. and we work with families, with kids, so that kids can grow up understanding this stuff. Mm -hmm. So that by the time five, ten years in the future, this is more of a widespread understanding of how to actually live from principle instead of just chasing energy all day long. Yeah, I so, agree to that. Yeah, I agree to visibly live in the principles. All right, this is the final one for this part, and then we just have a few others. All right, my physical body is my temple. 
I honor and support my physical body as an expression of me. I nurture it and care for it in order to ensure my, po my best possible expression in this life. I take into consideration the impact of thoughts and emotions on the physical body. And within this, I commit myself to practice self-awareness and self-care through not only diet and physical wellness, but also internal stability and clarity. Yeah, this is such a cool one. So I've implemented some things in uh, my day to day that I've just gained. Uh, so I've been listening to some audios that have supported me with this specifically uh, of like comparison, like comparing myself to other women. And so uh, a tool that I have in my back pocket is anytime that I, I am aware of myself looking at a woman and being like, oh wow, her breasts are more perky than mine. Oh, she's got a nice tushy. Or wow, her hair is so flow and just, it's long and my hair is short and just like comparing myself to this person, right? Like, you, you know what I'm talking about, men. You probably look at their muscle structure or their jawline or their hair. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you don't. But I, I compare myself. So I'm, I'm working on that point right now. And in this, it's like, in that moment, I first take my eyes off that person immediately. As soon as I become aware. And then breathe and just look two feet in front of me. And realize my body is supporting me to get where I need to go. And realizing each person is unique. Like every single person is built differently. You will never look like another person. You will never look like the image you've created in your mind. And so getting to know my, my physical body intimately has been really cool just to see like it's only going to be what it is. And I can be the best expression of myself, but I can't change myself. And I understand some people will say, well, there's plastic surgery and operations that you can have done. But I'm, I'm not coming from that starting point. <laughs> Nick, that's a great question. Your thoughts on smoking or TV? Well, um, I, I personally don't smoke. I know there's way too many chemicals in it. Um, mm -hmm. Also, cigarettes are designed to keep you addicted. Um, even if it's weed, weed will just speed up your mind and it will suppress your emotions. And so uh, I know a lot of people who are trying to make changes in their lives, but they're not willing to give up weed. Mm. And it will just keep you stuck. Yeah, so your, just, yeah. your physical body is an expression of you. And so if you're needing to you know, alter your physical body's state in order to be... Like alcohol, um, smoking, smoking, anything, yeah. um, then even, even TV... Like if you need to alter your internal state by stimulating yourself with television and getting those fixes of dopamine and whatnot, like that just shows that you are not able to be with yourself. Like your, your inner state is kind of chaotic and spastic and like you, you, you're uncomfortable just being as yourself. And so you need to alter that state through these things. Um, and so if, if, you truly want to nurture and care for yourself uh, to ensure your best possible expression. I don't think your expression is who you are while you're smoking. I think your best expression is who you are naturally. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I, I know what it's like to, you know, sometimes we think, oh, if I smoke some weed, I'm like really creative or it helps me relax or sleep. And yes, mm -hmm. you, like, I understand that that's a thing, mm -hmm. but when you actually give it up and then you start walking this process mm -hmm. and writing every day and just like being here mm -hmm. and like appreciating who's around you in life in general, like you will feel high just going outside and looking at nature or going on a walk, but it's going to take some time, especially if you've conditioned yourself to that. But that's, that's the importance of group. You can have like-minded people. Yeah, I um, personally went through that point. I... I actually received medical uh, marijuana in Minnesota and I would get like medical grade CBD to help with nerve pain. Um, I was in a car accident a few years back and it was because I didn't like the, the nerve pain medication the doctor gave me. 
Um, and so I was trying this um, medical grade CBD and THC to support with sleep. And I just found after getting off of those things, I was able, <laughs> I was able to, well, there was a period there. So I, I, I stopped doing that. And there's a period where I, it was like, I had to make that decision every day that I wasn't going to do that. And there was a while where my nerve pain still was acting up quite a lot. And if anything, it, it kind of like swung the opposite way. Uh, made like worse <laughs> um, but after a few months of of not smoking I not only came to normalize but my my body seemed to know how to support itself with those things and it kind of I could like it's like I, it was like I could almost feel my leg healing itself and it that my leg is where I was feeling most of the nerve pain I injured that part specifically of my body um, and I, it's like I could feel my leg reconstructing itself. That's and, pretty cool. Yeah. And so I didn't, I didn't, I, now I, I, I don't see the need for it whatsoever. Even though I, it was, I totally justified it in my mind before. Like, I need this to sleep and I need this for my nerve pain medicate for my nerve pain. Because um, I also had like four to six four to nine hours of sleep a week in my first semester of college. Like it, I had serious like things going on where I felt it was justified. But uh, now after getting off of all that and being able to just be here and support myself with myself, like with my body, my body is supporting itself. Uh, your body will support itself if you're able to grow an awareness of your body. Because if you, if you continue to stimulate your body and suppress your body's ability to do the things it needs to do by taking a bunch of medication or smoking a bunch, doing alcohol, things like that, you're physically changing your body. And so then you're altering your body's ability to support itself. And so it'll be really cool to see what you find in just... And honestly, I think t television does that as well. Just <laughs> two cents on that. Uh, because it it's continually stimulating you and it's at this like rapid rate it's actually like high yeah, it's speed like high, imprinting yeah. you with the things that you don't want in your body so it actually is altering your internal so yeah both smoking and um television as well as medications alcohol things like that as much as you can get off of them i would highly suggest it uh and just let your body do do its natural healing and as well as supporting your body to be in its natural state because if you're completely overweight if you like have these different things going on with your body like you got to support your body to be able to focus on regulating and being in homeostasis like you know your body is made to move like you have muscles for a reason you don't have muscles because you're not supposed to use them like you're supposed to walk. You're supposed to like Lifting. use your arms and like use your back and your core and like your body's made to move. So like, move it. Mm -hmm. Like and just really encourage your body's ability to do what it's meant to do. And so it's like really so many people say they're separated from their body. That they're that's two different things I'm like, no it's it's this is your physical body and really get intimate with yourself and know like why is this ache and pain here why do I have a slight headache you know just really being present with your body and setting it up for success so that it can do what it naturally can do mm -hmm. and that's heal you yeah that's like yeah. two cents on that cool I mean I, I agree to that for sure I, I agree to that yeah because I'm I spent a very long time just like this would be the one principle that I was like eh yeah my body's good enough like I used to work out like I'm, I'm good you used to <laughs> yeah so now it's like mm -hmm. I've now act I had to look at within self honesty mm. of what do I actually need to do to support my body and yeah. really live this principle so yeah that's cool cool so those were all the principles from the destiny website that we've incorporated in the principles that we've agreed to in our relationship and then we've got a few that we want to mention on this call just because 
we know other people are going to be creating principle or yeah principles that they agree to within their relationship and then that or even with yourself but yeah yeah and that may not be yeah of course thank like, <laughs> um that may not be like taking the destiny principles and applying them right away maybe you're you're going through that change because it's it's a process of changing i love that mm -hmm. um so these are just like some some smaller ones that we not really smaller but these are just other ones, ones but they're like more straight to the point yes okay so i agree to not emotionally manipulate you for my own self-interest. Oh, I agree. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree to that. Yeah, that's such a big one. I mean, mm -hmm. we can make a whole video on that. Yeah, we will. Yeah, okay. And next one. I agree to be honest even when I think it might hurt. Mm, yeah, Ooh. I agree to that. Yeah. I agree to walk in self-perfection and return to the breath if the ego tries to take me off that path. Yeah, I agree to that. Agree. Oh, man, that ego. Once you understand <laughs> what it is, it's mm. eye-opening. And then you can go back to being here and mm -hmm. not operating from ego. Yeah. Yeah, I agree to that. Okay, I agree to maintaining you as my sole sexual partner. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. I agree to that. There's a ton of benefit to that. Yeah, I agree to have children with you and raise them in self-perfection. Yes, I agree to that. Agree We're to still that. a few years out, but that's the, <laughs> that's the plan. That's the plan, <laughs> yes. I agree to continually grow in my ability to receive love. Yeah, that's this a, cool is a one. big one because super supportive it's kind of like the love language thing but it's like way beyond that it's yeah. like if you are trying to like show your loved one that oh i love you but they can't receive it yeah it's like it, it just ain't gonna and, work. It, and it's so cool because now i see like pretty much just by him living out the principles we've agreed to is him showing me love so if he's building the business or he's taking care of his own physical body, like washing his face in the evening or flossing his teeth, like things like that. I see that as him expressing love for me because he's taking care of his physical body. I mean, like that's a, not only a principle we've agreed to, but now we get to e enjoy each other even more because we're living our best physical expression of ourselves. And so it's, it's really cool to, to look at that point, um, I know some people say, well, my love language is gift giving, and if you don't give me gifts, then you're not showing me love. Well, that sounds like a horrible existence. <laughs> like, if you grow in your ability to receive love, it's also better for you, <laughs> mm -hmm. because then you can see it all around you all the time, and it's better for them, and it, it's, it's better all around, not only in your relationship, but in... The life, the world around you, because everybody is gonna express themselves differently, and so you really, that's yeah, that that one was a, I don't know when we added that, but I like that one. Yeah. I agree to that. Yeah, I agree to that. Um, I agree to remaining teachable. Ooh. Yeah, what ten and ten, mean baby. If you don't know what teachability is, it's from this training called "Your Wish Is Your Command" by a gentleman named Kevin Trudeau. He explains that the most important thing after paying attention to who are you listening to. The most important thing you can do is be teachable, which means two things. One, your willingness to change. Well, one, one's your willingness to learn. Second, you can flip them in, in and out. Willingness to learn, learn willingness to change. change. If you can have those two things and be 10 out of 10 on each, you will grow so fast. 10 out of 10. Yeah, that you will be able to mm -hmm. do whatever you want. So we're agreeing to remain teachable, teachable. Willing to change and learn. And then we've got some that we agreed to within money. So I agree. It's like any relationship, like the biggest cause for divorce and breakups is, is money. money. So we built that into our agreement. Yeah. So I agree to track my finances on the 1st and 15th of every month. So that just means like tracking my net worth. Like any, all my banks, credit cards. Uh, say you had student loans or you had other kind of house loan or something whatever it is like having all that and then putting your net worth at the end mm -hmm. um, and like if you have any investments and things like that oh yeah, so then on the first and 15th we're always at least looking at it yes she has hers i have mine but some of it overlaps now and it's yeah. like the coolest thing 
Because yeah. it kind of sucks. If you've never looked at it and you've been afraid of it, it's going to suck the first few oh, times. Oh, yeah. But then when you I keep doing it. When I first did it, it yeah. I, I had so much resistance to tracking my fat because I had never done it before. Mm -hmm. And I also knew I would have to start taking more responsibility for how I was spending my money. And so I was like, oh, when we made this agreement, I, I started doing it the first couple months. It was all right. But then I wanted to track my finances. And now I look forward to doing it. Because I showed her how to make money. My net worth has been going up and like just all these things. And now I'm like, is it the first yet? Is it the first yet? Yeah. For a couple months, it was like that. But now I'm starting to be more here and that's good. So I'm not like so distracted by that. But yeah, for a while there, I was super, super excited. So now it's just like something we've implemented and I see the logistical like importance of it as well mm -hmm. as like to remain like self honest and to trust yourself with your finances it's vital that you track them and you know where you're at with your finances mm -hmm. and then the final one is i agree to read the budget note on the first and update it in self honesty and it says how i'm honoring it what does our budget note look like the budget note is basically you take everything that you've spent so like your main um, personal or business account and just look at like the, so the most recent one would be the August statement mm -hmm. or starting October 1st, I would look at the September statement. And I'll look at what's that total at the very bottom, a couple thousand dollars. Okay, there it is. That's the expenses. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I just put it on the budget note. But now we have, I mean, I have the past couple of years yeah. of this is how much I spent that month. So some months I spend a ton, some months is less, mm -hmm. but I'm getting an average and then I also, at times, will look at, okay, this much is going towards rent, this much is going towards yes, different projects, that's, that's things like that. That's something that I do. Um, on the first of every month, I actually, not only do I look at how much I spent that month, but I track each individual transaction. Like, my Amazon spending, my grocery shopping, my... Um, any kind of, like, my gin membership, my techno tutor payment... There's this, the, all of that is all listed out. I, I love looking at where I spent mm -hmm. money because then I look at the one that I always pay attention to is like coffee shops and restaurants. Some months it'll be like zero. Some it'll be like 15 and then some months it's like a hundred and I'm like, oh, okay. We were out of town. Okay. Like mm -hmm. just seeing that, but it's just cool to see like what, which area fluctuates and yeah. And, and then when you know what it is and you know, you're good. Now you can go out to that restaurant and let's say you want to get the guacamole and it's $2 extra. You're like, yeah, give me that guacamole and you don't feel guilty, right? Because yes. I can still remember when I'd be like, I'm like at Chipotle. I'm like, ah, I'm like, I want the guac, but I'm not going to get it. Or the just Izzy it wasn't at clean. Chipotle or the horchata at yeah, a Mexican restaurant. E exactly. Ooh. Or like you go out <laughs> and you're like at Starbucks and you're like, oh, I really want like that fancy it's drink. But like. I'm, I don't know, like, if I'm at an airport or something. And you get foo foo drinks and stuff? <laughs> no, I actually just like the plain ones, but sometimes they're like, ooh, add a shot of espresso or something. Oh, uh, okay. That's pretty okay. good. So it's like, when you know this stuff, <laughs> and you're being self-honest within your budgeting, or whatever you want to call it, your financial planning, mm -hmm. you then can actually be present, mm -hmm. and then you can be That's like, cool. hey, Jess, let's go on a date on Friday, and it's... Going to be awesome. And I know in the back of my mind, we could spend $100 on this meal and everything, and we'd be set. What can okay? I do on a date? So that is what you can do Yes. to bring your relationship to the next level. And That's it. That's what we're going to share from our relationship agreement. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to go live and kind of go through it with you just to see like what that looks like. Um, I know sometimes we go into more depth. It takes longer sometimes. Sometimes it takes like up to two hours longer of just like really introspecting and investigating how that's playing out in our lives um, because sometimes there are really big points that come out like uh, one was making love real one time we went real deep on that point for myself because uh, I I wasn't really aware of all the ways I was making love real and I honestly just had to sit down with myself and like make a list of all the different ways I was making love real. But Mitch helped me come to that conclusion that I need to do that because we have these relationship like meetings. We read through all of the things we've agreed upon. 
and it's amazing. And we just went live, did it with you guys. Mm -hmm. Show you how sometimes it's done. we'll do it at a restaurant. Sometimes we'll do it sitting outside. Walking. Sometimes, yeah, on a walk. Like, and it's we do our best to do it bi-weekly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a day or two off, but we mm -hmm. always do it. Yes, because that's what matters. Is it's it's who we are. Oh, we you just know what? We it. can add to our agreement mm -hmm. that we'll go over our agreement bi-weekly. Wow. Even though it's un it's unspoken, but we can wow. always add it. That's true. <laughs> Genius. Wow. I'm so smart. Living our utmost potential, right? <laughs> cool. Well, right, th friends. thanks for tuning in, everyone. I will put this on YouTube later, so you can check it out on my channel. Mm -hmm. And uh, I look forward to yeah. hearing all your feedback on this and how you implement it in your life. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye.